Hello guys, my name is Yulia Bone, and we continue study of microeconomics with chapter 6, that is supply, demand and government policies. So far, when we were talking about supply and demand and equilibrium price and quantity, we know that that equilibrium price and quantity was naturally formed on the market by invisible hand or by interaction of buyers and sellers. Nobody dictates what price of goods and services supposed to be on the market. In this chapter, we go on so the, very, so the very first policy is going to be price ceiling. And price ceiling is a legal maximum that product can be sold for. So once again, I want you to read this definition and try to understand this price ceiling. This is a legal maximum that product can be sold for. Remember, when we have this legal maximum, it means that product can be sold for less than what is a legal maximum, but product cannot be sold for more than is that is legal maximum. So let's look at two different scenarios. Um, let's suppose that we have market for ice cream and our market for ice cream initially is going to be in a certain equilibrium. So we have a supply and demand. Everybody knows supply is an upward sloping line. Demand is a downward sloping line. And we have equilibrium price and quantity. So let's suppose, just random number, equilibrium price of each ice cream is going to be um, $3. And equilibrium quantity is going to be um, 100 units. And now government can impose price ceiling and let's suppose price ceiling is going to be imposed above the equilibrium. So just random number, we're going to say that, well, you know what, you know what, the price ceiling for ice cream is actually going to be $4. So $4, this is higher than equilibrium. I'm going to put that this is price ceiling. And now we need to figure out if price ceiling is, Im is imposed ab above the equilibrium, what kind of outcome we're going to have on the market. Just think about it. Price ceiling, this is a legal maximum that product can be sold for. Guys, remember, our equilibrium, this is the most perfect situation on the market. At equilibrium, remember over here, this is where quantity supply is equal to quantity demanded. And all buyers and sellers, they're happy because sellers, they deliver 100 units on the market and buyers, they bought exactly 100 units. So everybody's happy. Buyers and sellers, they're perfectly happy. So just think about it. if the price ceiling is imposed above the equilibrium what kind of price we going to have on the market which one of these two prices are still going to dominate on the market and you will think about it and say equilibrium price and it you're going to be correct because remember we cannot sell higher than four um than than four dollars but can we sell lower than four dollars and the answer is yes so therefore this equilibrium price of three dollars is going to stay on the market because this is where everybody is happy once again sellers they sold everything that they wanted to sell and buyers they bought everything that they wanted to buy so when you impose price ceiling higher than equilibrium, the outcome on the market is going to stay the same. So over here, I'm going to put that outcome on the market stays the same. Our equilibrium price is not going to change and equilibrium quantity is not going to change. Pretty much over here, they just told me, you know what, you cannot sell, okay, ice cream at higher than $4. But you know what, I really don't want to because at $3, we have this perfect equilibrium and therefore we're still going to sell this ice cream at $3. Moving on, this is our very first scenario. Once again, you need to remember for the test, for the quiz, that if price ceiling is imposed above the equilibrium, then outcome on the market stays the same. Quantity equilibrium is the same and price equilibrium is going to be the same. So the second scenario is going to be when price ceiling is going to be imposed lower than equilibrium so we're going to have the same market for ice cream so we're analyzing the same market supply and demand 
we have equilibrium price of three dollars equilibrium quantity of one hundred dollars and now government is saying well you know what we are going to impose price ceiling in the amount of two dollars so this is going to be price ceiling remember guys i'm going to emphasize price ceiling this is the legal maximum that the product can be sold for now let's look at this all together and try to decide when we impose price ceiling lower than equilibrium what price is going to dominate on the market remember all natural forces on the market trying to move our market to equilibrium to this equilibrium in the amount of three dollars but can we do it by law by law we cannot do that because government said that we cannot sell this product higher than price ceiling our price ceiling is in the is the is in the amount of two dollars you cannot sell higher than that that just not allowed by law so therefore the price of two dollars now is going to dominate on the market now at this price of two dollars i want us to see what is our quantity supply and quantity demanded so at this price of two dollars i'm going to go and meet with my very first curve the first curve that i met with is supply curve therefore over here i'm going to have quantity supply and let's suppose it's going to be 75 units so guys i want you to see how precisely the law of supply and demand is working here remember based since we're looking at supply curve think about the law of supply when the price of the product is decreasing by law this is what we need to charge remember what happened with the quantity supply quantity supply is decreasing isn't it exactly what we see here on the graph Okay, so we lower the price of the product or government did. Now, what, how many units is going to be supplied on the market? Now we're going to supply less units because sellers are getting less money for each unit that they're selling. Now, the second thing what we need to do, we need to go and meet with our next curve. Now I went, met with my demand curve. So therefore over here, I'm going to put this is our quantity demanded. And let's suppose I'm going to put this as 125 units. Again, pay attention how the law of demand works here. When the price of the product is decreasing, what happens with the quantity demanded? Quantity demanded is increasing exactly what we see here on the graph. Now think about it we have quantity supply that is 75 units so sellers they supply 75 units on the market buyers want to buy 125 units on the market what kind of situation do we have we do have a shortage isn't it because once again we supply only 75 units buyers want to buy 75 uh, 125 units so therefore over here over here we're going to have a shortage of 50 units or guys this triangle over here is going to represent shortage this is shortage so now therefore i want you to kind of pay attention and you know make a conclusion that if price ceiling is imposed lower than equilibrium then our quantity supply is going to decrease our quantity demand that is going to increase and we're going to have a shortage on the market okay so now let's do on the just kind of like you know look at this look at this graph make sure you understand everything that is going on uh, let me write down we're going to come back to this question in a second let me kind of write down the um you know the result so if price ceiling is imposed lower than equilibrium Therefore, we're going to have a shortage. And I'm going to put over here at price equal or price, yes, price equal to $2. This is price ceiling, remember. Our quantity supply was 75 units. Our quantity demanded was only 125 units. And therefore, we have this shortage we have shortage 
and remember guys all natural forces natural forces remember that invisible hand trying trying to bring our market to equilibrium to equilibrium um how about i'm going to to equilibrium price of three dollars but by law we cannot charge charge higher than two dollars okay so therefore we created a shortage okay now i want you to think about this guys what do you think when government impose price ceiling lower than e equilibrium are they trying to benefit buyers or sellers so just think about this for a second when the price ceiling was imposed lower than equilibrium are they trying to benefit buyers or sellers and the answer is going to be they're trying to benefit buyers now my question is are all buyers benefit from this policy and the answer is no remember since we supply at two dollars only 75 units remember this is quantity supply we supply only 75 units but the buyers want to buy 125 units this is quantity demanded we created a shortage remember looking at this everybody pay attention some buyers benefit from that policy how many buyers just look at this graph and think how many units buyers were able to buy on this market once again how many units buyers were able to buy on this market and the answer buyers were able to buy 75 units because this is how many units we delivered on the market or this is how many units sellers delivered on the market before when the market was in equilibrium how many units buyers were able to buy and buyers were able to buy before 100 units isn't it now they can buy only 75 units so therefore not all the buyers benefit from this policy remember those who actually bought ice cream at the price of two dollars those 75 buyers they're going to be better off because they got the ice cream and they actually paid a lower price for the ice cream what about the rest of the buyers remember we actually have 50 more buyers who want to purchase a product those buyers don't get any ice cream at all remember these 25 buyers they over here the difference between 75 and 100 this is 25 isn't it remember these 25 buyers before when the price was three dollars they were able to purchase the product now they cannot and these 25 buyers new buyers came into the market because now price is lower they go on the market and they cannot get ice cream at all so therefore some buyers benefit from this policy who get an ice cream at a lower price but some buyers cannot get any ice cream at all guys remember we have a shortage when we have a shortage then mechanism okay for rationing um is going to uh, occur when we have, have shortages first of all we're going to have long lines in the stores okay so remember those buyers who bought ice cream at two dollars it was at the cost of standing in the long lines and waiting for that ice cream and also we're going to have discrimination according to sellers biases what a seller is going to do they're going to sell to their friends and family first okay so and this is you know like the soviet union everybody knows right now that i'm from belarus during the soviet union we had shortages of food all the time so i remember when when my mom like she sent me you know to our local you know i grew up in a very small village she's sending me to um you know to a grocery store to buy bread and usually i go like you know two hours before i know that the bread is going to be delivered um in our little grocery store so you just stand and waiting and people piling up and piling up in order to get that bread okay because it's not going to be enough for everybody we had shortages of food all the time so long lines that was a very very common 
Okay, there was a very, very common, um, you know, um, I guess thing on the markets. And then, yes, those who were working at the grocery stores, they all the time put something aside for their friends. There is some stuff that actually didn't get on the market or didn't get on the shelves, okay, because they're selling, you know, to their, to their relatives and friends first, and then whatever is, you know, available, we're going to sell it to the other public. So shortages in rationing, this is a common thing during the, um, um, or oh, I'm sorry, discrimination based on seller biases and rationing. This is a normal thing during the shortages on the market.